tutorial section is just like we'll make it up on it's yeah. .io. I noticed that because I, I went for the it's like I, I had no I, I left this as a placeholder yeah. and then I had no time to but I kind of laughed at that we're getting the controls for the dash I should have told Zed to make swimming a bit faster okay I'm thinking I'm colliding against oh, no. the invisible wall <laughs> so the mech has no head oh yeah but there's a head part oh there's a head part okay but Hi gamers and developers and welcome to another GDT vlog. On today's vlog uh, we're going to talk about Raki's Game Jam of 2023.2 uh, and we have one of the team members that participated in this jam. So uh, essentially this jam uh, you, uh, you have to make a game uh, in one week based on a theme so it's your typical um, game jam and the theme of this uh, one was diving deeper. So like I mentioned, they had one week to make the game and we're going to talk about that and show you what they did. So yeah, um, the name of the game is Deep Sea Aquatic and uh, the team members, I'm gonna let uh, first Carlos introduce himself so, and then, yeah. Uh, Carlos, I was kind of like the main designer of the game and one of its programmers. Uh, and the other programmer alongside Carlos was uh, José Siopa and if I'm not mistaken, he made the gameplay programming, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, Tomás Oliveira, who was the artist for this game. Uh, so, do you want to talk about your game? Basically, Deep Sea Aquatic, it's like a mix of Armored Core and the Devil May Cry Bloody Palace mode, which was our compromise to get, get content mm -hmm. into the game easily. Just, let's just make floors. And it fits the theme of diving deeper as you go further down. I had Armored Core in my mind because when we did this year, it was back in August, it was when Armored Core 6 came out. And uh, I was like, wanting to do like a mech sort of thing with parts and customization. And uh, for like the diving deeper theme, we also thought about a Returnal because it has a level where you dive into water and it's like really creepy underwater. You go that further down and down mm -hmm. until the final boss of that game. So you mentioned this was also inspired in Devil May Cry? Right? Yes, yeah, so Devil May Cry has something called the Bloody Palace mode, which is literally like you have a floor, you kill enemies, and you, you move on to the next floor. And you have to do that all within a certain time limit. But uh, how did you come up with these ideas? So, not the part of the, the, the Devil May Cry and stuff, but uh, the mecha part of the game? I did, we just, I had Armored Core on my mind, it was like Armored Core, which is a game, it's by From Software, and it's really like you make your own mech. You buy parts mm -hmm. and uh, you customize your mech and you complete missions to get more cash and yeah. so on and so forth. I was gonna uh, actually ask you about that because the game has, uh, whenever you finish the level, right, you get to um, rebuild, rebuild, not, not rebuild, but change your mecha to, to be more stronger. So how does that system work and how did you make that system? So basically when you kill enemies, they drop boxes, they give you parts, and so basically, if you want to heal your mech or switch parts, you gotta exit the mech and swim, which costs time, so you can interact with the mech and repair the individual parts or switch out parts mm -hmm. with the menu. Okay, I didn't know that, that it had time between um, levels, so you make one, uh, you reach one level, right? Basically, so there's always have... a timer going down, oh, so okay, basically okay. you have to do all the levels, so you gotta manage the time you spend repairing and switching parts. It's just kind of blasting through it as fast as you could. Okay. So okay. it's like a risk reward kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're going to show you the game. Unfortunately, see, uh, unfortunately, uh, we can only show you level one, but it's fine. I think you can. I, I'll uh, explain like the yeah. level. So we're gonna get to play the game, and I'm gonna hope I remember the controls because our tutorial section is just like we'll make it up on it's yeah. .io. I noticed that because I, I went for the this is my fault I never read the, the instructions on each IO page so I went to to that tab that teaches how to play the game and I, 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 no, I, I left this as a placeholder yeah. and then I had no time to but I kind of laughed at that <laughs> it's fine <laughs> I just need to uh, remember the controls okay so basically each mouse button is like an arm. And you can see like we have weight, we have moving speed, we have health. Uh, we currently don't have a boost, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I got this part. 
So can you tell me about uh, the bars on the So on basically left? we have uh, an alt bar and that's like uh, a dash bar. We don't have a dash yet. We need a mm -hmm. bar for that, I'm pretty sure. Either that or I'm like forgetting the controls for the dash. I should have told Zed to make swimming a bit faster. Okay, I think I'm colliding against oh, no. the invisible wall. <laughs> Okay, but maybe you can showcase uh, the um, yeah, mecha change parts. So basically, I have the current stats and the mm -hmm. new stats. I don't know which parts I got, I need to check over here. Okay, so apparently we got a different torso. So which what makes does you, that... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That has less health, but also makes you lighter, which you might want because it's basically like Skyrim. Your default speed, if you go overweight, you start moving mm -hmm. slower. So right now uh, we're gonna actually start moving a bit faster because now we're not having that weight. So if I move, oh okay okay yeah I yeah see. I we're moving a bit faster. I was actually wondering about that because I I, I, I saw that you could make upgrades, but because I bought uh, arm parts, then uh, I couldn't test the torso. So I don't know what happened, I think it was supposed to be three enemies and then like a portal spawns to take you to the next level, which doesn't work because like you fall into the next level but the enemies still spawn here. So mm -hmm. I think the game just bugged out because I don't know where the other enemy is and I don't see a portal. Yeah, but that's like, fine. Like it should be here at the center somewhere and it's not. Yeah, but that's fine. Uh, when I played actually, uh, the second level started with more enemies. Yeah, that so, makes sense. So yeah, but I think you. I have, think I did like a logarithm or something yeah. to. I think you have like a, a maybe a lot of time in uh, of an interval between uh, enemies spawning maybe. So, but yeah, I think uh, you guys can can see how this works, uh, and of course you can play it in uh, their each IO page. I, I I don't know if it's yet on our uh, GDT page, but if it's not, probably it will be. Well, best as well. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, I want to talk about the gem itself now. Um, of course, you guys can play this game, but um, maybe you want to know about the gem itself. So I don't think we ever had anyone participating on this gem. I'm not sure. So which is weird because everyone in GDP uses practice tutorials. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. But uh, what did you think of the gem itself? Um, it was fine. It was. It had a team. We could vote on the team before the gem. I'm pretty sure. They had like a selection and this is pretty most popular, which is nice. And it was very standard. It was just, okay, here's a week, we'll rank the games at the end. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think one question that maybe uh, you might have back at home, because this is a Brackis gem, did you have any kind of additional support that you feel um, that is different from the other gems? Not particularly. We were just kind of doing the game on our own. Okay, okay. We didn't really check like a Discord or a each forms for the gem or mm -hmm. whatever. And the games are ranked yes, at the end. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, okay. So I think this one is a casual experience, if I'm not wrong. Uh, if you're interested in participating uh, in a casual experience gem with a the theme, I think uh, maybe this one can be for you. Um, I think maybe overall, I just want to discuss the organization of the gem itself. Did you feel like everything was clear, that it was confusing? No, everything was clear. Like this gem fail because we were a bit ambitious. Which sometimes you have to be, like you yes. don't want to get stuck. Just don't be afraid of trying. <laughs> being, doing run of the mill, I'm, doing, I'm sure this can try, mm -hmm. this can end. Like sometimes when you have a newbie, like I was here talking about the GMTK gem, we were just did reverse Pac-Man and was like, yeah, we kept it simple so the newbies could finish something. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, we're, we're, we're a team of three, we're more experienced. We're, we're going to be, be ambitious. To... Yes. Yeah. Okay. It didn't really work. Yeah, but I think, uh, did but... you have fun making it? Yeah, it was fun yeah. just like figuring out how the parts like worked yeah. and designing them, having the Excel sheet with all like mm -hmm. the weights and the benefits. Yeah, I think that's kind of what matters I don't um, know. regarding some gems, uh, right? I learned an important lesson, which is if your gem is like a week long, have something resembling a design document and enforce it. Because like, you can see like, if, I'm gonna show it here again. So the Mac has no head. Oh yeah. But there's a head part. Oh, there's a head part, okay. But we want, so the plan was to have like different heads. But then when we actually got the design, they didn't, didn't read the words. Yeah. Okay, we have no head, but we have to fit this. And uh, 
if you try to repair this uh, Mac, which I don't know how you do, maybe you can because it has foiled, you can like repair individual parts. And I was like, Zen, please don't do that. It's just gonna make this everything harder. Yeah. <laughs> Gameplay wise and programming wise, it's like, but I've already done that. And I think that causes a bunch of problems. And it's like, mm -hmm. Because yeah, now we have to save like the status of each part instead of just saving what the part is. And that was a bit of a pain. Yeah. And it's like, no, have a design document and make sure everyone is like on the same page. Mm -hmm. Not like a big design document, just like a word with it, like mm -hmm. the ideas and such. Okay. So make sure, even if, especially if you're an ambitious project, because someone might be, get a bit too ambitious even. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was actually going to ask you for advice for the viewers back at home. So I would say that maybe that is your advice. Yes. So, so in up, um, you said that one week games should probably have some sort of game design document. And I agree. Not, of course, not something very extended because you don't have time for that. But uh, everyone must be in the same line to work together. Um, for it to work yet. <laughs> so I think that's it for today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next vlog. So as always, check our social media, check our other videos, vlogs, anything you can catch your hands on because it's all very good. So yeah, I will see you in the next time. Bye!